Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my last tutorial, I showed you how to convert your Kiwi app into a debug APK using GitHub Actions. But today, we're taking things further. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to convert your Kiwi app into a release APK or AAB fully signed and ready for the Google Play Store. And yes, we're still going to automate the entire process using GitHub Actions. I've broken the process down into seven clear steps, all laid out in this guide I've prepared on GitHub, and we'll be following it step by step to walk through it all. By the end of this video, you'll have a release-ready app automatically built, securely signed, and ready to publish. So, without any further delay, let's jump in. Now the first step in this process is to add your Kivi app files to a private GitHub repository. But before we do that, I'll be using one of my own Kivi apps for this demo. And it's not just any app. This is WalletWise, a production-ready expense tracker template built with Python, Kivi, Firebase, and OpenAI. Let me give you a quick tour of what it can do. First up, it includes a fully working login and sign-up system already connected to Firebase authentication. You can add transactions with real-time updates thanks to Firebase's backend integration. It also comes with a clean, built-in statistics dashboard, letting users track and analyze their expenses. And yes, WalletWise includes an AI-powered assistant. It uses OpenAI to provide financial insights and help users understand their spending habits. Everything you see here is easily customizable, from the theme to the transaction cards to the charts, and even the AI behavior. You can grab this full template from my Kofi store for just $8, available for the first 50 buyers only. Once purchased, you'll get full source code and assets, commercial rights, and a ready to deploy Android support with GitHub Actions included. And don't forget to check out the free templates available in the store as well. All right, let's now upload this app to GitHub. Go to GitHub and create a new private repository. Give it a name like WalletWise release build. Then click Upload Files and drag all of your app files into the browser. Make sure to include your main.py, Buildozer, and all relevant asset folders. Finally, click Commit Changes. And that's it. Your Kiwi app is now uploaded and ready for the next step. Now, the next step in this process is to generate the Keystore file. This is one of the most important parts of the entire process because without a key store, you can't sign your app for release. And without a signed app, you can't publish it to the Google Play Store. To generate the key store, we'll use a tool called KeyTool, which comes bundled with the Java Development Kit, or JDK. So first, we need to download and install the JDK. Let's open the link provided in the guide. It will take you to the official Oracle website. From here, select your operating system. In my case, that's Windows then download the installer. Once the download finishes, run the installer and follow the steps to complete the installation. After installing the JDK, we need to check whether KeyTool is available from the command line. To do that, open your command prompt and type KeyTool-version. If everything is set up correctly, you should see the version of the tool displayed. If you get an error saying that KeyTool is not recognized, you'll need to add the JDK's bin folder to your system's path variable. Once KeyTool is working, let's go back to the guide. Here's the command we'll use to generate the KeyStore file. Let's copy it and paste it into a text editor so we can customize the parameters. Let's go through each part of this command. KeyStore. This is the name of the KeyStore file that will be generated. You can keep it as is or rename it. Just make sure it ends in .jks. For this example, I'll rename it to walletwisekey.jks alias. This is a unique name used to identify your key inside the key store. I'll use something like wallet alias as an example. Validity. This defines how long the key will be valid. In days. We'll keep it at 10,000, which is roughly 27 years. More than enough. Store pass. This is the password that protects the key store file itself. For this example, I'll set it to something simple like wallet1234. Key pass. This is the password for the key inside the key store. It can be the same as the store pass or different. To keep things simple, I'll use the same password. Now let's look at the dash D name section. This contains information about you or your organization. 
CN stands for common name, usually your full name or the name of your app. I'll use my first and last name. OU stands for organizational unit. For example, your role or department. Let's use something like mobile development. O is the organization name. This could be your company or brand. L is the locality or the city where you're based. I'll use New York. ST stands for state or province. I'll use NY. C is the country code using a two-letter format. For example, US for the United States. Before we continue, make sure to save your alias, store pass, and key pass. You'll need these to sign your APK or AAB now and for future updates. Now let's copy the full modified command. Navigate back to the command prompt and make sure you're in the directory where you want the key store to be created. In my case, I'll generate it in the desktop. Now I'll paste the command and press enter. Once the process finishes, you should see a file called WalletWiseKey.JKS created on the desktop. And that's it. The key store has been generated successfully. Now that we've generated our key store file, you might be wondering, what do we do with it? Well, in the next few steps, we're going to automate the signing process using GitHub Actions. To do that, we need to securely provide GitHub with everything it requires to sign our app. And that includes the key store file, the alias, the key store password, and the key password. But here's the catch. GitHub Secrets only supports plain text values. That means we can't upload the .jks file directly. So, in step 3, we'll convert our key store file to base64 format, which is just a plain text representation of the file content. This allows us to safely store it as a GitHub secret in the next step. If you're on Windows, the easiest way to do this is with a built-in tool called Certutil. Here's the command from the guide. Let's copy this command into a text editor so we can adjust it. You'll want to replace the default file name with the name of your actual key store file. In our case, it's walletwise.key.jks. This command does three things. It encodes the .jks file into base64, it filters out extra formatting, and it saves the final result to a file called keystore-base64.txt. Now let's head back to the terminal. I'm already in the desktop folder where my keystore file is located. I'll paste the modified command and press enter. Once it finishes, you'll see a new file called keystorebase64.txt in the same location. Inside is the base64 encoded version of your keystore. And in the next step, we'll add this text, along with your alias, store pass, and key pass, to GitHub Secrets. To do that, go back to your GitHub repository, click on Settings, then scroll down to Secrets and Variables, and select Actions. This is where we'll securely store all the sensitive information GitHub needs to sign your app. We're going to add four secrets in total, and you can copy the exact secret names from the guide to avoid any typos. Let's start with the first one, the key store itself. Click New Repository Secret. In the Name field, copy the name from the guide. In this case, it's Key Store Base 64, and paste it here. Now for the value, Open the keystore base 64.txt file we created earlier. Copy all of the base 64 text, then come back and paste it into the value field. Once you're done, click Add Secret. Now we're going to follow the same process to add the rest of the secrets. Just follow along with me. Once all four are added, they'll appear in the list like this. And that's it. GitHub now has everything it needs to sign your release APK or AAB automatically during the build. Now, the next step is to tell Buildozer that we actually want to create a release build, not just another debug version. To do that, we'll make a small change inside the Buildozer file. Let's open the Buildozer.spec file directly in our GitHub repo and click the Edit icon. Just a quick note here, I'm not going to walk through the entire Buildozer configuration in this tutorial. 
If you need help setting it up from scratch, check out my previous video on how to build a debug APK. I explain everything in detail there. For this release version, we only need to make one change that we didn't do before. Scroll down until you find the line that says Android.release artifact. By default, this line is commented out, which means it's inactive. To activate it, simply remove the comment symbol at the beginning of the line. This line is set to output an AAB file, which is perfect if you plan to upload your app to the Google Play Store. So, if that's your goal, just uncomment the line and leave it as it is. But, in this example, I want to generate a release APK instead. So I'll go one step further and change AAB to APK. Once that's done, click Commit Changes to save. And just like that, your buildozer.spec file is now set up to create a signed release APK. Now it's time for step six. We're going to use the GitHub Actions workflow that will build and sign the APK for us automatically. I've slightly modified the build workflow we used in the previous debug tutorial. And to satisfy different publishing needs, I've created two separate workflows, one for building a signed APK and one for building a signed AAB. Here's what this workflow does, step by step. In step one, we decode the base64 encoded key store back to its original format and save it as Android JKs. Step two uses the Buildozer action to compile our KV app into an unsigned APK. At this point, the APK file includes unsigned in its name. In step three, we use JarSigner to sign the APK using the key store file and the values we stored in GitHub secrets using secure SHA-256 based algorithms as required by Google Play. In step four, we rename the file, replacing dash unsigned with dash signed. And finally, in step five, the signed APK is uploaded as a downloadable artifact in your GitHub Actions workflow. Let's now set this up. First, copy the APK workflow from the guide, then go back to your repository on GitHub. Click Add File, Create New File. In the File Name field, enter the full path dot github slash workflows slash build dot yml now paste the copied workflow into the editor then click commit changes as soon as you commit the file github actions will detect the workflow and automatically start building your app click on the actions tab and you'll see the build already in progress now all we need to do is wait for the process to complete i've fast forwarded a bit here the build just finished successfully and it took about 20 minutes. Now it's time to download our artifact. Click on the workflow summary, scroll down, and you'll see a download link. Click download, and GitHub will give you a zip file containing your release app. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and unzip the file. Then I'll move the APK to my desktop, just to keep things organized. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, how can I know if my APK is properly signed? That's exactly what step 7 is about, verifying the app signature. Here's the command we'll use to verify it. Let's copy this command and paste it into a text editor. Now, replace the placeholder file name with the actual name of your app file. Once that's done, copy the modified command. Let's go back to the terminal. I'm already in the desktop folder where the APK is located. Paste the command and press enter. And here's the output we get. It lists the internal files of your app and includes signature-related metadata that confirms whether your APK is signed or not. Now, here are the signs that your APK or AAB is properly signed. First, look at the beginning of each file line. You'll see letters like S or SM in front of the entries. S means the signature was verified. M means the file is listed in the manifest. Seeing both together, especially the S on the manifest file, is a strong sign that your app is signed correctly. Next, look for the section that shows your developer information. These are the values you entered earlier using the dash D name option when generating your key store. Make sure everything matches, name, organization, location, and so on. After that, check the validity period. This confirms that the certificate is active and hasn't expired. It should match the number of years you set in the key store command. For example, 27 years. And finally, scroll down to the bottom of the output. You should see the line, jar verified. This is the final confirmation that your APK is signed and verified correctly. Now, 
If your APK or AAB is not signed, you'll likely see something like JAR is not signed or JAR failed verification. If that happens, go back and double check your signing step, your key store values, or the workflow configuration in your build file. And that's it. You've now successfully built, signed, and verified a release ready APK, completely automated using GitHub Actions. So now that your app is fully signed and ready, here's what you need to do to publish it. The next step is to create a Google Play developer account, prepare your store listing, and upload your signed AAB to the Google Play console for review. And if this is your first time publishing, you'll also need to generate and upload your signing certificate. But don't worry, it's a simple one-time step. I'll leave a link in the description that explains exactly how to do all of that, step by step, along with the link to the full GitHub guide we used in this tutorial. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like. And if you have any questions or run into issues, just drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help. And if you'd like to support this channel, check out my Kofi shop. That's where you'll find the WalletWise template and other cool Kiwi templates. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.